Christmas, a very good morning to you and a very warm welcome and a happy new year to you as well. Uh, it's great to see each and every one of you go, uh, an awful lot of people um, unable to be here uh, today. But isn't it nice um, to have it not rain in? I know it's cold, I know it's frosty, but oh, it's, we all got fed up, I think, of um, all that rain. Well, anyway, shall we have a look at the announcements? Um, tonight, six o'clock, our evening service, followed by a cup of tea or coffee, whichever your preference. It'd be good to see you. Lady Circle, tomorrow, um, 12.30 tomorrow, um, in the Black Boy, your New Year's lunch. Right, um, the Bible study. Now, uh, there's a new season of Bible study starting um, this uh, Tuesday, and we'll be looking at Elisha. Elisha, because um, it, uh, as I said last week, before Christmas, um, we looked at Elijah, so we're going to look at Elisha um, this uh, new term. 7.15. It's always good to have fellowship. It's always good to uh, meet around the word. So if you haven't been before and would like to come, it would be fantastic to see you. So that's the Bible study. Shop Sharad will be starting again um, this Wednesday. It's for those learning Welsh or wanting to, um, I don't know, uh, be reintroduced, if you like, to Welsh. Um, again, it's a lot of fun uh, and we learn a lot together. So Shop Sharad, that's at midday on um, Wednesday in the school room. Prayer meeting, Wednesday, 7.15. Um, in the prayer room, uh, in the school room, there's no uh, meet, uh, meeting, so that will be there, 7.15 on Wednesday. Um, evening. Forget me not. Both meetings here this week, it's for those, of course, um, suffering with dementia and those caring for them. If you know anybody that would be, that would benefit from our Forget Me Not meetings, well, please just get in touch. Um, they'll be more than welcome. The Ladies' Bible Study. Um, I trust it went well Friday. Yeah, excellent, great. And this Friday, uh, Jan uh, Janet Price from Persalem Gorsainan will be leading the Ladies' Bible Study at 2 o'clock. Um, all ladies welcome there as well. And the election of deacons, which will be um, on the Sunday, the 28th of this month, uh, re-elections and new nominations, but only church members, of course, can nominate um, and be nominated and vote, of course. Uh, our um, charity of the year, Key Hope Centre, um, Again, can I just clarify that we do not uh, advocate um, abortion, but we support a Christian charity that extends the compassionate um, hand of Christ to those that have suffered the trauma of miscarriage, stillbirth, and uh, abortion. Uh, and your support would be greatly appreciated. Um, the Romanian Aid Foundation supporting the Ukraine, you've been absolutely amazing, honestly. Almost every time I walk into that bathroom, there's uh, literally sacks of stuff. So thank you ever, ever so much for your continued support there. And indeed for the Skepti um, Food Bank, always a great need and your support is amazing. I really mean it. Thank you ever, ever so much. And fellowship news. Now, John is still unwell. It's not like John to be um, unwell for such a long uh, time. 
um, know him. Viv, Viv's husband, uh, the funeral is tomorrow, Tilda's uh, funeral is tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in Kenecki Crematorium. So please uphold Viv and the whole family in prayer. Um, also, Jim, Jim Bass, um, he's home, he's been in Morriston Hospital, but um, the end of his journey, this side of eternity, is coming to an end, and Jim is looking forward to heaven. He's actually praying that God will call him home, you know, he's tired. Um, and as much as he loves his family and as much as they love him, um, he's now looking forward to being received to his heavenly home. So we pray for that. We pray for, we love Jim to bits, uh, absolutely love Jim and Mary. Um, they don't come much nicer than Jim, do they? Um, lovely, lovely chap, but we pray um, uh, that God will call him and we give thanks for the hope that we have of eternal life through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Do continue to uphold Mali, uh, baby Mali, in prayer and Dudley um, and the whole family indeed. Victor and you as well and all those people that are unable to join us on a Sunday because um, sadly um, ill health, old age has um, caught up with them, but we remember them and we pray for them. Have I missed anything? Have I forgotten? There we are. It's your fault if I have no right. And it's lovely to see Sarah and Mary, is it Mary the dog? Yeah, Mary the dog with us um, this morning. We're a dog-friendly chapel, isn't that wonderful? The dogs are great, it's the humans I have trouble with. <laughs> so a very, very warm welcome to you all. And oh, now then, um, the two ladies in the back, now then, I know you, but I can't remember your name now. Elsa, Elsa, hey, it's, I'm getting there. But the lady sitting next to you? Liz. 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 Very warm welcome, Liz and <coughs> Elsa. Lovely to see the two of you this morning. Lord, at the beginning of this new year, we thank you for all the blessings that we received last year. And this morning, Lord, we pray that we will be able to say throughout this new year, morning by morning, new mercies, we see. Bless us, therefore, through your Spirit, for we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, a welcome back to Janet. Janet, it is lovely to see you. Lovely, lovely to see you, and you're looking very well. Thank it's you. good to be back. Yeah, it's good to have you back, Janet. Well, Steph isn't with us this morning, so we um, rely on the technology we have. And we're going to sing together, my hope is built on a thing less. Shall we stand?
comes from Philippians chapter 4, uh, the epistle of joy, of course, uh, verses 4 to 9. Philippians 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Lord, we thank you for such promises that the Lord of peace will be with us. And what better promise at the beginning of a new year as we face the uncertainties of the new year. How wonderful it is to know that the Lord of peace, our Ruiz Tangnebe, will be with us. You have promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. And we give thanks to you that we can be sure of your presence, your help, your strength, your grace, your faithfulness throughout this new year. And Lord, we ask that in your grace and mercy, through your Spirit, you would allow us to be blessed in every way. Your wisdom is perfect. You know exactly what we need. You know exactly what is good for us. And we pray, Lord, that you would provide and that you would open our hearts through your spirit to receive what you have to give each and every one of us. You know us better than we know ourselves. There isn't a single need here this morning that you're not aware of. And we know that you feel a deep concern for those needs. You love each and every single person here this morning equally. And you are able to help. You are able to provide. And therefore, Lord, this morning, we pray that you would do that. If there are any anxious hearts here this morning, we pray that you would provide that word of peace, that word of tangnefe, which, as we have just read, transcends all understanding. Lord, we pray not only for ourselves, but we pray for those that we mentioned earlier, 
and there are others also not. We bring them to you. You are with them. You are with their families. And we just pray, Lord, that you, again, would provide all that they need at this time. And Lord, you are indeed sovereign Lord, God Almighty. We just pray that you would speak to those even the most unwell, that you would speak to them and give them the assurance of your love of your peace. And at the beginning of this new year, sadly we know that many, many of your children, many Christians all over the world will be suffering again, will be persecuted again. Indeed, many are being persecuted now. We pray for them. And we pray for those that persecute them. We pray for this world, again so full of conflict. We pray for Israel and the conflict there. We pray for the leaders of the nations that you would indeed would give them wisdom. And we ask your forgiveness for all of our sins. These things we ask in the precious name of Jesus who taught us when praying to offer this prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, shall we sing together, Great is the Gospel of our Glorious God. Thank you, Morrison.
received. This is on, is it? No, no, it's not. It is now. Right, can I ask a question? How are the new year's resolutions going? Are they going well? Are they? No? A few have you broken already? Uh, I'm sure. Um, I've only made one resolution, and that is not to make New Year's resolutions. There's no point, see, they're very, very difficult to keep. But at the beginning of a, a New Year like this, I think there are four essentials for a well-furnished life um, that we need to adopt as Christians. Things that have to do with our relationship with God. Four things I'd like to share with you this morning. Things that we should aim for. Realistically aim for because these things are well within our grasp and they are things that we really need as Christians. First of all, rest. Rest which is found in Jesus Christ. Rest which is found in Jesus Christ. Even Christians can fall, and they do fall, into the trap. The trap of the pressure the world gives on reaching our potential. That we should work, work, work until we reach our potential. Now, the problem is this. Who determines what our potential is? Is it the imperfect minds of other people? The imperfect wisdom of other people who look at you, look at us and say, you can do better. You can reach higher. You need to try harder. Or is it our own imperfect wisdom? We can so easily uh, delude ourselves to think that we can reach higher than we actually can, that we have more ability than we actually do have. And we can push ourselves, put pressure, too much pressure on ourselves until we make ourselves ill. And that is wrong. That is us letting an imperfect world have too much of its influence on our thinking. I know a person who is very dear to me, a very dear friend, a teacher, who is ill, right? Who is ill. And this person, even though this person has been told by the doctor to take time off work, even though this person has been told by fellow staff to take time off work, refuses to do so. It's almost as if this person has been brainwashed, yes, as a Christian, has been brainwashed, no, I can't. I have to keep going. Rest is not an option. And I believe people, including Christians, are making themselves ill, physically and mentally ill, because they are yielding to this pressure of this imperfect world. They think that they are indispensable? Or possibly, is it pride? Is it the fear, I ask you, is it the fear of realizing that things can carry on without them? Is it the fear 
of their sin. That truth, I wonder, well, this is not what God teaches us. Now, remember, God doesn't tell us to be lazy. We are not to be lazy. Of course, we are not to be lazy. The Bible speaks of the sweat of the brow, that we are to labor. Of course, we are. But God has provided a way for us to have rest. He knows what is best for us. And in his sovereignty, in his love, he has instructed us, not just Christians, but all of mankind, to have rest. But this is especially true of Christians because we need to rest in Christ. Are we doing that? Are we resting in Christ? I love the words of Psalm 55, verse 6. Oh, that I had the wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. What does Psalm 23 tell us? He makes me lie down in green pastures, whether I want to or not, God makes me to lie down in green pastures. Why? Because he knows that's what I need. Then, because so many people will read in Mark chapter 6, verse 31, then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to them, his disciples, that is, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Get some rest. Come to me, Jesus said in Matthew 11, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Give you rest. Too many Christians are not allowing themselves that rest in Christ. So much so that they're too tired to properly read the Bible. Too tired to properly spend time with God in prayer. After what preaching since 1986, okay, and of course there are many who have preached longer than that. You get to know congregations, you get to know expressions, right? That's why I didn't like masks, um, because I couldn't see people's expressions anymore. And I know those that are there in body, but their minds are elsewhere. What's the saying? Uh, the lights are on, but no one's at home. Okay? And there are Christians that are so tired because of this pressure that their worship, their time of fellowship with other Christians suffers. Rest, dear friends. Rest is not a sinful word. Rest is not a sinful thing to do. Jesus tells us to rest in him. Secondly, communion. That's another thing we need, all of us. Every year, every day of every year, communion with Christ. What we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, God is faithful, through whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Fellowship with him, to enjoy his company, to enjoy his fellowship, because as Christians, we can so easily, without trying, push him out. 
he becomes redundant, we force him to be redundant in our lives. And that is why he tells the church in Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. But he is not just knocking, you see, he's calling. Because he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. He wants to have fellowship with us. He is the bridegroom. We are his bride. And how sad it is in any marriage when the bridegroom and bride don't talk. Isn't it? Isn't that sad? <laughs> it is most of the time, anyway. But when it comes to the great bridegroom and his bride, it's a terrible tragedy. That fellowship, that fellowship with Christ. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us. And they weren't even aware that it was Jesus who was with them. Yet their hearts were burning within them. Abide in me, Jesus tells us in John chapter 15. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Now think of those words, for apart from me you can do nothing. That is why fellowship with Jesus is so essential and he gives us every opportunity to have that fellowship with him. We have fellowship with him every time we open his word. He then speaks to us we have fellowship with him when we are on our knees in prayer, when we are speaking to him and him to us. And dear friends, we have fellowship with him, communion with him when we gather together to worship him, to study his word, to pray together. Because Jesus himself said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So we have every opportunity to have fellowship with Jesus. He's with us this morning in Siloam, in the midst of us. Let's enjoy that fellowship. And it's not just here, but wherever we are. There's a hymn, <laughs> you guessed it in Welsh, my dim and found pope here. God is everywhere. His presence fills everywhere. And found pope here, present on a pope man, present everywhere. And this Eu e ve, o bau, at e night, gwan he is next to that weak soul. Or thlau o hyd, i wrando cri, always at hand, to hear our cries. Ne sai at ddim, si dda i mi. Ni ring to God is good for me. And thirdly, dear friends, yes, rest in Christ, communion with Christ, but instruction from Christ. We need instruction from Christ. Take my yoke upon you 
and learn, <coughs> learn from me. And I love this, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. You see that word again? Rest for your souls. I have no doubt in my mind that God is a God who gives choices. In his sovereignty, he gives us choices. We see this in the Bible from beginning to end. God gives a choice or gives choices. He gave a choice to Adam and Eve. And throughout the Bible, he gives choices. Yes, he gives commands. But he gives freedom to those he gives commands to. We are accountable. When God gives us a command, when God gives us instructions, we have the freedom whether we are obedient to that command, whether we follow that instructions. We're not robots. Robots don't have choices. Do they? You program what they're supposed to do and they will do it or they're supposed to do it. We are not like that. God has made us moral creatures. We have been made in his image and likeness and therefore we are creatures of choice. And it's up to us whether we learn from him. The law of the land says that, how old are you now, uh, um, Jude? 14. How old are you, Isaac? 18. 18. Already. Wow. Where does time go? Well, this does not apply to you, Jude. And it certainly doesn't apply to John now, but it does, sorry, sorry, Isaac, it doesn't apply to you, Isaac, but it does apply to you. Jude, the law of the land says that if you're fit enough and well enough, you have to, by law, attend school. Right? Okay? Um, that's why you get up full of enthusiasm on a Monday morning um, uh, going to a school, then going, because basically the law of the land insists that you do so. Right? And if you do not do so, there are consequences. Okay? There are consequences. So the law, in effect, forces Jude to go to school, as it forced all of us to go to school, right? But once Jude is in school, once Jude sits behind his desk, it's up to Jude whether he listens to the teacher or not, isn't it? That teacher can't make you listen all of the time. That choice is Jews. God has given us his instruction. He has given us his commands. But it's up to us whether we accept those commands. William Scanter Hale, the great Welsh hymn writer, Ruin Dewis, yes, I Ivarwon Glory, I choose Jesus and his mortal wound. In other words, he could have rejected, but he chose. He chose Jesus, and we are here this morning worshipping him because we have chosen Jesus. And it's up to us whether we receive his instruction or not. But it's to our peril that we reject his instruction because his way is perfect. His way is just. We are imperfect. We are unjust. Yes, take my yoke upon you. 
and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And finally, dear friends, this morning, rest is found in Christ, communion is enjoyed with Christ, instruction is received from Christ, but testimony must be given for Christ. Testimony must be given for Christ. And I bring you back again to 1 Peter chapter 3. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But this is just as important, dear friends. But do this with gentleness and respect. Listen to Jesus again, dear friends. I am gentle and humble in heart. What did Paul say to the Philippians um, that I read to you earlier? Let your gentleness be evident to all. Tanirwch gentleness. Chydd i bawb i farn a pob barn i chabar. Basically, everybody is entitled to their opinion and for that opinion to be aired. I can't remember who said it. Um, I do not agree with what you say, but I will de defend to the death your right to say it. And yes, I've got to tell you, dear friends, I'm glad that we live right in a free society. That freedom seems to be shrinking more and more, and it should be defended. And we should pray that it be defended. But can I share with you something that irritates me greatly? Not many things irritate me, but this does. The walk brigade. Fine. Share your opinions. Right? Stand on your platforms and share your views. But what gets me is they cannot bear to be challenged. They don't allow you to finish a sentence. They're in your face, they're shouting, they're opposing, and it's aggressive, isn't it? It's absolutely aggressive, and it comes from all directions. We all know people who have been taken up by this walk thing, the aggression. We are not to be like that in our testimony. We are not to be like that in our sharing. Listen again to what the Bible says. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. I am gentle, Jesus says. Let your gentleness be evident to all. We give thanks for the rest which is found in Christ, the communion we can enjoy with Christ, the instruction we can receive from Christ, and the testimony that we have for Christ, for his glory. Amen. Here is love, vast as the ocean. Shall we stand to sing?
where each person, of course, must examine uh, themselves. But there's an invitation for all who are in Christ to partake in the Lord's Supper. We eat the bread as we receive it, but we drink the wine together at the command of um, the Word. Through your spirit now, Lord, we pray that you would help us indeed to remember. As we eat the bread, we pray that you would help us to remember how Jesus suffered for us, the extent of your love for us, that he did not spare his own son, but give him up for us all, that he took upon himself all our sins and give every believer his righteousness. As we eat the bread, help us to remember these things and let it nourish our souls. In his precious name we pray. Amen. <coughs> For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, Lord, through your spirit, we pray that you would help us to remember the value of his blood shed for us on the cross. He left his throne above and bled for Adam's helpless grace. The blood of the new covenant, the blood of the Lamb. As we drink it, God, help us to remember its value. And we pray that it would nourish our souls in his precious name. Amen.
after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Bless us, therefore, Lord, as we remember all that you have done for us, what you continue to do for us, and what you will do for us, for your glory. Amen. Amen. Now then, in the final hymn, which is Madison, Be Still, My Soul. Now I'm afraid I have to make a quick exit because I'm supposed to be somewhere at half past twelve. Watson, can I ask you to close in prayer? It's been great to see each and every one of you. Uh, again, Flwyddyn Newydd, I have to you all. It's still a bit slippery, I would imagine, outside, so do take care um, on your way home, whether walking um, or driving. And uh, bless you each and every one. Dear Morrison, shall we stand to sing these days, my soul?
depth of the Old Testament comes really the very first blessing that God gave to you and to me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.